Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Painter. If you are brand new here and wondering what this channel is about, it is a channel aimed primarily at getting brand new painters to get some paint on their otherwise grey miniatures. We, we make content aimed around the miniature hobby and just basically being an amateur painter or new to painting and just wondering where to begin, how to get going and having some tutorials like in this video where I'll be painting Spider-Man from Crisis Protocol and we're going to be carrying on with that and showing you how I'm going to go about doing it hopefully quickly and easily with very little effort and with that in mind in this video I'm going to be using Citadel's contrast paints now I've ummed and awed about this I'm, I don't know how well it's going to work on these miniatures I'm a little bit worried that I might lose the accuracy I need to paint these incredibly high detailed miniatures we're going to find out we're going to find out together and hopefully it's going to be a sweet result at the end that's super quick easy and barely an inconvenience now the tools i'm going to use we're going to grab my trusty hobby holder and in fact i'm not going to use the usual caps i've got some putty under here keeping secret and safe and then we're just going to stick the miniature to this and that's just going to give me something to hold the miniature with very easily without getting paint all over my hands and smearing off what we cover i've also got this is actually a prototype wash wizard, which is from the same company that makes the hobby holder. I'll leave links and a discount to all of these products in the description below. And that's just gonna stop me knocking over these ridiculous parts. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Nah, you can't knock it over once it's in there. And then I'm gonna be using what I found to be a really nice brush for contrast paints. And this is the Red Grass Games number two brush. It's just huge and it holds a lot of contrast. And this is primarily the tools I'm gonna use. I might have to switch down to some smaller brushes as we go through but for these first stages we're gonna we're gonna be using this now you're gonna start by shaking up this a lot and for all the shtick i give army painter for the amount of shaking you need to do these contrast paints are oh, my arms aching i was shaking this before i started filming i started filming so i could have a rest i'm gonna go shake this a lot more having shaken that talisa blue until i couldn't feel my arms anymore yes oh, i'm so happy i can't even feel my arms I'm now going to slurp up a huge blob of it on, on this paintbrush, which really holds a high quantity of it. Next, we'll be applying this Telesa Blue to all of the blue parts of Spider-Man. And luckily, there's so much reference material for these comic book Marvel characters that it was easy to look at where to apply this to. Because I actually thought his pants were, were pants, sorry, what do you call these in the States? Briefs. His underwear part was actually red. But I think I'm thinking of like Superman perhaps. So whoopsie. But luckily, loads of loads of reference material out there. So you can just double check. I actively left a gap in because I'd filled this with a lot of green stuff. And hopefully, if you watch the unboxing video, you can see how much better this looks now I've green stuffed it up. But I actively left that gap there to make the break in his pants because I thought these were red and the rest were blue. So whoopsie. That should be a little bit more green stuff, I think, but it'll, it'll be okay. Okay, hopefully, maybe not, I don't know. Now with his pants completely covered, hopefully the contrast will start doing its job and pulling into the recesses and pulling off of all the raised parts, applying the highlights and the shade for his for free. Then we're gonna move on to painting up the blue parts of his arm. And these models, as I mentioned in the unboxing, they've got the detail and it's it feels very Games Workshop-esque to me where it's got enough detail that you can you can paint the miniatures up and make them look really good but not so much detail it's difficult to paint and they've got really good lines between the blue parts and the red parts of this spider outfit for the actual spider on his back i'm going to be painting this in normally afterwards so i'm not going to worry too much about getting blue on the spider i'm going to paint over it i just want to make sure between all these legs it's got a nice amount of this Talisa blue so the uniform under it is the right color and just like that all the blue is done so yeah it's just a matter of letting the contrast paint do its job and coming back once that's all completely dry a nice way to speed up this painting process i am waiting for that blue to dry before i add the red but this rock is absolutely nowhere near the blue so let's paint that in and this can be drying at the same time so here i'm using a silicon gray which is another contrast paint just going to super carefully paint in this well actually it's not even in fact no it's not even going to be super careful because i'm going to paint the base using normal paint and i'm going to paint that uh girder girder that's a good 
good word. I'm going to paint that girder using normal paint as well. So this doesn't need to be super careful, but you do want to avoid his boots. And that's just touching here. So be super careful around the boots. But the rest, I'm going to cover up it in a minute anyway. So it's going to be no here, no there, with rest fill a little bit over. But yeah, this is going to dry at the same time as the blue. And we're going to have done two parts for the same you know, same wait period. There's just going to be a bit of waiting in this with all this contrast paint. Now, you might want to paint your base this color if you're going to go contrast your base. But I want my pavement to be a little bit lighter than this rock. So this is my choice here. I don't own a lighter a lighter gray in the contrast range. I don't even know what it is. Let me know in the comments below if you know what the lighter gray, and they must have some. And that's what I'd use on the pavement potentially, but I just, I'm just thinking there's a lot of flat surfaces on that pavement area. So normal paint's probably gonna serve it better than letting this contrast paint pool all over it. While we're smashing out things that can dry at the same time, I'm actually gonna paint in his eyes. I'm gonna use apocryphery white. That's a word that's, I can't say. Apocryphery? something white. Now this is high risk, high reward because I might catch it with the red, which I paint in a little bit, but I'm hoping I won't. It's got those big borders, which are going to be black anyway. So let's just get him his eyeballs in position so they can be drying as well. Look, none of them touch. I think it's super easy to let them dry simultaneously and it's going to speed up this whole process. Still waiting for that rock to dry but while doing so I thought I'd get the base done because I don't mind if this paint mixes a little bit with the contrast at the bottom of the rock because it's going to be in shade anyway I'm going to put some wash there I'm now using army painters filthy suit and that this is the gray I'm going to sort of go for with the pavement look and feel and I think I'll just apply this all the way around and then we'll probably darken this down and highlight it back up in the next few steps but yeah I'm using the big brush again just gonna go all the way around the base it won't matter if you get it on on the rim although I'll probably paint the rim black just to make the miniature pop back out but make sure you get it in the 3d side section as well but yeah cover the whole base in this light gray if you like how this is looking one thing to note, this paint is super watered down. It's over 50% water actually. And I don't mind if it's not got complete coverage. I think it adds to the realism of the pavement. It's gonna be lots of different shades of gray, white, blacks, that sort of thing. So I'm happy that it's not quite getting 100% opaque coverage, not a problem. We'll see how it dries, but actually looking at that, I'm pretty happy it's done some of the work for me. We'll just darken that down and maybe I won't even have to highlight up too many areas. I think the previous shades, colours are now at a dry enough point that I can start adding the red. Primarily, I'm just trying to aim it around. I'm about to go and eat my dinner, so that's perfect drying time. If you guys are looking for efficiency, try and make sure you get anything that takes a long time to dry. Oh, no! Be super careful, guys. Oh, that came off like a breeze. Barely even notice it. And that is why we were waiting for this to dry, because if that was still wet, it would now be purple. But that's not that's not too bad. So be super careful. Try not to film as you're painting, and try not to talk as well. Just take your time, concentrate. But yeah, if you can time bit, big parts of the miniature that need to dry with doing something else, like batch painting, is a good idea. But just just eating, eating in general is pretty good. Have you guys tried it? If you'd like to see some tutorials on the channel regarding me eating, then let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to oblige, I do like a good meal. Now I'm using the big brush here, and I think I'm gonna switch down to the smaller brush for any of the smaller details, so his arms and his boots, and probably his face as well, because I really don't wanna get any of this red. Although the eyes actually look super easy, like he says, and then probably splats of red across his eyes. But yeah, don't forget to downsize at this point if you need to. You might have needed to already, Don't by all means, don't don't necessarily have to stick with a big brush. I just find this one holds a lot of contrast, which makes it quite easy to apply. No, oh, I've got to his gloves and I've still got the big brush, not having to downsize yet. As I said, these lines, these this edging he's almost got on his little piping on his suit breaks it up nicely. And we're gonna paint that in black, probably using normal paint anyway. So I don't mind blue on one side and red on the other. Little pro tip for you guys here. If you're short sighted like myself, Turn that misfortune into a pro fortune. Take your glasses off, take your specs off, 
and you can get infinitely closer and your eyes are going to really help you there. I can see the detail much easier when it's close to my face without my glasses on. You probably guys you probably all know this already, but I didn't know until <laughs> I was informed by my wife that being short-sighted is beneficial to looking at things really closely. So a little tip for you. Onto his boots now. I'm still using the big brush. I think I'm definitely did a smaller brush for his belt part though. And I'm probably going to go downsize around this rock as well because I don't want to ruin what's already been painted. Holy crap, I just need to take a minute to realize I'm painting Spider-Man and I know this is contrast paint and I know, you know, there's only so much quality you're going to get, but what? I'm loving how it's coming together already and it's painting Spider-Man. Down to the smaller brush for this belt as I thought it's better safe than sorry here. It's not very wide, is it? And again, a small brush just being helpful around this rock that's painted in it exactly as I want it so just getting up to the shaded area and then it's just a matter of letting that red dry while I go and eat my dinner perfect all right guys welcome to the next day and this is now dry I think the contrast is looking really really nice actually I'm, I'm impressed with how quick that was so we're going to be moving on to some of this piping detail these the border uh between the red and the blue. I'm gonna do that in black around his eyes as well and his little spider sign on the front and the back. And For once, I'm just gonna use straight matte black, which is unusual. I normally use a dark gray, but in this instance, I think I just want black very subtly highlighted. One thing I did want to point out is this is gonna be quite detailed work and off camera, I'm actually using a new magnifying lamp by Owl. Now that's a sister company of the Grinning Gargoyle who make those paint sets that I'm quite into at the moment. If you're familiar with the channel, it'll take a long time to review things. I just wanted to show you this product that I am using outside of, you know, filming. Let's see if I can paint any of this without it on camera. It's it's so small. I might even downsize from this brush. As I can't use my magnifier here, I've downsized from my insane detail brush by the Army Painter. I'm just really going to take my time and try and get these lines nice and neat. I don't want to get it on any of the contrast because that will be hard to paint back in after, it, after the fact. But I'll probably just go around very watered down. I'll try and just get the top edge and let it sort of pull itself down the side slightly and then tidy up any of the white that's remaining. So I finished off the piping using the magnifier. Worked really well. It actually helped me see super good. But what it doesn't help is be a better painter. Now, it, with this piping, it's raised and it's really thin and it's quite difficult to get any of the brushes to catch the top edge without them sliding down and go in towards the, the rest of the suit. So just be careful with that. I'm just really taking my time and I'm gonna to continue to do this off camera. I need to get that magnifying glass in between my face and the miniature. But I'm gonna paint the rest of the piping on his top and then gonna do the piping on his boots as well and around his eyes. So all of that's gonna be in black for me. And we're complete with the piping, I think. A couple of things to mention is I also did the bottom of his boots in this black as well. So the soles of his feet, as well as there's like a little bit of edging around that too. And it's not too bad. It's probably probably going to be the most difficult part of the painting part of this uh, Spider-Man. Uh, one little tip that I had was in the end, instead of going across each layer of piping, I was almost underneath it and doing one thin layer of black then I flipped the miniature and did a top layer here and I did that on most of the piping once I worked out that was the best way of attacking it. I also clicked in my hobby holder handle which does two things. One it gives me more area to press into my desk and just steady my hands giving me a lot of removal of the shake and then the other thing was like his hand was catching on the table when I was painting so this kind of stops that from happening keep moving it round and keeping him off the table, not rubbing any of the paint off any of them. Same as if you need to put him on his head, you could put it on the stand. It's just another tool, guys. If, if like myself, painting is difficult, then I've just got all the tools in the world that I can help. And I don't use this on camera purely just because it, it takes the focus of the camera quite a lot and it makes it harder for you guys to see. So we're going to be sticking with this dead black. Dead black, matte black or dead black, actually. I've got both. And it's the same, same paint. It's black army paint of paint just from different sets and I'm going to also be painting in the spider on his chest and I'm going to have to do this off camera because it's really small again but it's just the same principle as the piping really really just going to take my time and just try and hit those lines as perfectly as I can 
and then there's also he's got a big spider on his back this one's going to be infinitely easier but again a it's going to take me forever to show you this and b i'm just going to get a lot closer to it with the magnifying glass get my hobby holder clicked back on and just lean into the table a lot more than i can while i'm filming so yeah paint this black guys i finished painting in the spider the front one is particularly difficult that detail's incredibly thin i think that's That'll do, that'll do. The back one's relatively easy, probably much easier than all of the piping, so I'm pretty happy with that. For the highlights of this, we're just gonna apply some Necromancer Cloak. It's a very, very dark gray, and was super, super watered down, by the way. This is probably almost more water than paint, and I'm just gonna try and paint a very thin line in the center of all of the black that I've added down the center line of the lot. So I'll start with his eyes, That's an eye done. Hopefully you can just about see there's just a slight hint of highlight. And I'm just gonna go around and do the same all the way around all of the piping. I do a little line down each leg of the spider, lots of legs, a little bit on his head. And mm, probably just try and catch the edges because this is more raised on the back. So I'm just trying to catch all the top edges of this, this back logo. And that's gonna be the highlight to the black. Having completed the highlights on the black, I'm gonna move on to this sort of steel girder that's protruding from this rock. And I'm gonna be using Army Painter's rough iron for the sort of base coat, of this really, really dark metallic. I'm just gonna paint the whole thing using this and the Redgrass Games two brush, big brush. It's really easy and really accessible part of the miniature. So I'm just gonna apply a nice coat of this all over it. And while we're waiting for that rough iron to dry, we're just going to add some dark tone army painters black wash to the to the base of this miniature. And what do I want to do here? Yeah, something like that. I think I'm just going to try and add a light coat all over, letting it pull in any cracks or little dints. There's quite a lot of dints in this surface, but try not to let it pull on the flats. So I'm going to be shifting this around a lot. I also would like it to darken down the pavement as when you saw when I painted it I was quite random with it a nice thin layer and I didn't mind if it didn't get full coverage and again with with the wash I'm going for the same but I just don't want any big pools if I can avoid it and that's just going to blend those tones a bit better as well as add some new ones some areas like here looks like a much thicker coating than here. So this bit will be a little bit darker, a little bit more random, a little bit more realistic, I think, to how this base should look. Just lots of different shades of grays and blacks. So yeah, working my way around all of the base. While the base is drying and now this girder has dried, I'm gonna use some of Citadel's technical paint. This is Typhus Corrosion. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with this girder. I just don't want it to be boring. And I'm not sure, like, what's this? What's the idea? Is this building just fallen? Is this RSJ here because because it's just collapsed, or has it been out in the rain for ages and there's potentially some corrosion going on? I'm not sure. So <sighs> paint this up how you you guys fancy, but this is how I'm going to do it, and we can have a look how how this particular one looks, and you can go from there if you like it. Copy along. If you don't, don't do this bit. But yeah, I'm just going to splat on. A bit of this corrosive looking paint it's just adding a little bit of texture it's going to make it look a little bit well honestly just cor corroded now i'm not going to paint it absolutely every little bit i'm sort of just stabbing it on i'm st stippling stippling is the word i was looking for I'm just going to try and stipple bits on here and there just making it look like it's possibly a bit dirtier or you know times rusted it up a bit i'm probably going to add a little bit of rust to it but only a little bit We'll, we'll get to that shortly. Right, time to add some highlights and some details to this RSJ, this steel girder. We're gonna use Army Painters a Machine Gun Metal, the dark silver that I use. We're gonna splat a bit on our palette. We're not gonna to want to add any water because we're gonna just sort of dry brush or stipple some color onto it. So I'm gonna grab my dry brush. This is a Citadel's dry brush, small dry brush. We're gonna get some silver onto the dry brush itself onto into the bristles work work it a bit into the bristles and then we're going to remove most of that paint working some into the bristles but not trying to go too far up to, as to ruin my ferrule but it doesn't massively matter because this brush 
is going to take a beating. And then I'm going to rub off most of that silver, so it's basically leaving nothing behind. And then I'm going to apply that to this steel girder. And where we've added that typhus corrosion, it's going to catch on some of those bumps. It's going to give it a bit of a rusty, silvery look and feel to it. And I think it's going to make it look nice and metallic again. Uh, I'm pretty happy with just how the typhus corrosion's settled on that rough iron to begin with, but this is just going to add another element of metallic and colour to it and catch on some of the, the lumps and bumps that's inside that corrosive paint. And we're going to catch some of the edges of the girder itself as well. Next, I'm going to be doing exactly the same with some of Citadel's dry riser rust. This is just really a bright, bright orange that just is going to, it comes in a dry brush form. So the paint's just very, very dry to begin with. And we're just going to just apply another bit of color. Uh, again, I'm just going to dry brush this on and try and catch really just this edge. And it's going to catch on those lumps and bumps that the typhus corrosions added. And that's, that's all I want it to do really. I'm just going to get it on this very tip as though this bit's more sort of damaged and cut open and exposed to the elements a little bit more than the rest. And it's just going to add another little color, a little bit of level of detail to this miniature. I'm going to fade it down the girder a little bit as well. So it's heavier on this end where I want it to be a bit brighter orange, a bit more rusty, and it's just fading, blending slightly as it moves down. Then for a final touch, I'm just going to get that silver once more. I'm not even going to clean off the orange off this brush because I don't mind a bit of orange in it go back down to a really, really dry brush level. And then I'm just gonna catch the very, very corners of the edge of this girder, just shine them up because I feel like there's often quite a lot of shine where the, where the rust's on the corners. It's just got chipped a little bit too. That's it, I'm happy with that. Next, I'm gonna add some highlighting to the base, again, using the dry brush and back to filthy suit. I'm gonna sort of stipple slash dry brush some of it on and just add a little bit patchy colors to the base and make it look a little bit less uniform now that wash is dry. I should mention while I was waiting for the wash to dry, I added another layer of this basilicum gray, the contrast paint to this rocks, just because once I darkened the base down, these were a bit too close, similar in color for my liking. So we're gonna load up the brush again, working some into the bristles and remove the majority of that paint from the dry brush onto my little kitchen paper. And then, yeah, sort of, I'm gonna dry brush these very edges just to give a nice highlight around the very rim of the pavement while there's still a fair bit, of, well, I say a fair bit, while there's some paint still coming off the dry brush. And then really, I think I'm gonna try lightly just catching this and, and just lightening it back up a little bit. Not loving how that's going on, a little bit streaky. So next, what my actual plan was, let's give that a go. And it's just stippling, stippling some of this paint on, just making it a bit patchy, a bit, a bit stipply, and just lightening it up a little bit, just blending where some of the wash has not settled quite how I want, but also just adding some patches of different gray into this and just make it look a little bit more like random concrete. I'm just going to work this round and build up these layers until I'm happy with how it looks. With the base stippled up how I wanted it, that just leaves me with doing a nice black rim all the way around. And really just clean this up, tidy it up, bring it all together and bring the focus to the, the Spider-Man himself. Oh, so exciting playing painting Spider-Man. I'm like thinking about it all the time, I just wanted to come back and finish it. Now I'm going to paint all the way around the outside of the rim and I'm just going to get this top top edge of the rim as well. I think that's the bit I want to get black like that. I'll go away and do that and show you what it looks like. And that's it, Spider-Man's completely finished. Oh yeah, I'm sure lots of you out there have models that you're quite proud of, quite happy with. I think it's just because it's Spider-Man and it means something. It's sort of similar when I was painting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the models mean something, you know, I know who these characters are. I'm really happy with this. And I keep going back and just having a look at it and being like, yes, this is good. I know it's contrast. I know it was super quick. It took me under an hour in total, but I'm, I'm well happy with that, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully that's inspired you to go and paint that. Hit like, leave a comment, hit subscribe. Thank you all ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.